Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Any group of human beings who are supposedly in a free society and who have a leader or a council of people who lead, assigned by that group to make decisions for the common interests of the group, must rely on their own self-regulation, above and beyond the leader's government, in order to survive. This is imperative as a check and balance criterion for a healthy society. In most democratic societies, this is done through the elective process. People are put into power, and taken out of power if need be, through elections, in other word, the popular vote. The people have to keep a keen eye on what is happening in their communities, at the local level, and in their nations, at a national level. And of course, they must exercise due diligence concerning global happenings as well. Only then will they know who to vote for that best serves their community. This is how we have control, albeit sometimes not enough, of our government. We have little control over non-government organizations, NGOs, through the elective process. But we do have control, again to some degree, on social norms, moralities, values, and other things that may grade against our own community standards as a mass, through protest and other demands for accountability. In this regard, our society is somewhat kept in check through a nation's constitutional requirements, as well as our personal assertion as to what is right and what is wrong. Human beings have traditionally been on the same page with some of these very basic tenets. For example, there are very few cultures, if any, that advocate, as a foundational tenet, murder. Very few, if any, that advocate child sexual abuse or physical abuse. Of course, what determines either one of these things can be rather subjective. Regardless of the outliers always present when making sweeping statements, which certainly there are, and a discussion of these outliers would take enormous time and attention, human beings share many fundamental tenets of good humanness. Unless, of course, they are pushed away from these fundamental tenets by some external force, corrupt government, con men, evil, Satan. Some will say we have a natural tendency to turn to amoral ways, think Moses stepping out for a moment to collect the Ten Commandments and what then ensued. That being said, what happens when a culture at large experiences, within that culture, something that deviates sharply from these tenets? The occurrence of such a deviation could come directly from the government, or come from the collective, or, in our current situation, appear to come from the collective, but in fact is an intentional deviation created by the agenda. The answer to the first question, in ideal times, is this. The culture doesn't stand for it. They make their dissatisfaction clear, and they revolt, or at the very least, do not comply with the agenda. They say, I'm mad as hell, and I am not going to take this anymore. Unfortunately, that time when our society would demonstrate such self-regulation, is long past. We saw the last remnants of it during the Vietnam era in the United States, and only from a certain demographic of society, and certainly not that successfully. Since then, the government, or whoever it is behind this march to oblivion, has made certain that such a dissatisfaction with the policies of the ruling faction was not questioned, and if it is, the person or group questioning is severely punished. One very smart move toward this gripping mind control was getting everyone glued to a cell phone screen. How they did that, and it not being just a natural evolution of technology, would take a book to address. Despite the underlying reasons why we do not regulate as a society, the simple fact is, we no longer do. There was a time, in a galaxy far far away, when the culture set these boundaries, if it were free to do so, and although the ruling class would attempt to cross them, they often failed. Today, it is far more likely that boundaries can be crossed without even a glance from the masses. Today, they've got us eating out of their hands. I will cite a few examples. 
Where is the societal outrage when thousands of young people are suddenly seeking surgery and drugs to support the myth they have modified themselves based on what they are told is a lie about their bio identity? Where is the I mad as hell when authority determines that they are the final arbiters of truth over children and their parents can just go to hell? Where is the societal outrage when we are suddenly told that we will no longer be allowed to use cash, or that we have to carry a digital ID, which will fundamentally wipe out any claim to personal autonomy, not to mention a complete destruction of personal privacy? Where is the societal outrage when a government spends billions of dollars to support the killing of human beings in a war halfway across the world, for no reason other than to fuel whatever nefarious and unilateral goals that government has? Where is the societal outrage when large factions of unelected people decide to take over the governance of the world from lofty and well-financed institutions, such as the UN, WHO, WEF, NATO, and locally, the FDA and CDC? Where is the societal outrage when a country's government allows the illegal immigration of hundreds of thousands of people without any vetting whatsoever? This is to name only a few examples. This video would be 5 hours long if I named even half of these outrages. What is the reason there is no shouting from the windows we are mad as hell? There are many reasons, one comes from the concerted effort of those who have the power to implement such an effort. It is to brainwash the society into compliance. It is like we are all hypnotized, and whenever the agenda activates a part of its plan, the silver pendulum comes out and is swung in front of our eyes, accompanied by a soothing voice that says, all is well, this is good for you. Needless to say, that voice could also be murmuring, pro-Palestinian or evil, hate anyone who spreads misinformation, Putin is the devil incarnate, hate him with all of your heart. Due to this sort of conditioning, among many other techniques, we as a society have lost nearly all critical thinking, and as a result, can no longer self-regulate as a culture. No matter how logical an action is, if we are told it is fine, or if it is framed in some particular way, we jump right to the agenda's plan, typically without a second thought. 2 plus 2 equals 5, 2 plus 2 equals 5, again and again this is drummed into us, and eventually we believe it, and then it only needs to be said once. Soon it will be, 2 plus 2 equals 6, and again, most of us will comply, and never give it another thought. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.